Nekal Millionaire at Afiso. $3.6 million is to give away. Simply buy a minimum of $10 in credit or data worth $10 to stand a chance of being a millionaire. To enter the weekly and monthly draw, send win by SMS to 772 or just call 772 for free. Remember, the more you buy credit or data, the more your chances of being a millionaire. Be that. Make a millionaire at Afiso, right? Hello and welcome to the Star TV Newsroom with me, Maria Amadeu. We are broadcasting from our studios in Sarakunda. And many thanks for joining us coming up. President Barak continues his with the people's tour in URR with a series of engagements. Social Security and subsidiaries hold technical meetings to boost intra-group trade. The Ministry of Health and Partners hosts press conference for World AIDS Day celebration. Ecomasa undertakes tree planting in city for enhanced environmental conservation. On international news, Sierra Leone imposes nationwide curfew after military barracks attacked. In the Congo's elections, President criticized for unfulfilled promises. There's a lot more coming to stage one. Many thanks for joining us. Let's now take a look at the news in detail. President Adam Barrow over the weekend continues his tour to connect with the people of the Upper River region, URR, fulfilling his constitutional mandate. On Saturday, November 25, 2023, the President embarked on a series of activities, starting with the momentous laying of a foundation stone for an early child development school in Mankamakunda, his hometown. Hadijaju has the details. This initiative marks a significant milestone for the community as they have eagerly awaited this development for years. Describing the foundation stone laying as a historic event for Mankamankunda, President Barra acknowledged the long-standing challenges faced by the villagers and expressed his gratitude to all partners who have supported the country's educational sector in achieving sustainable goals. So we thank the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education and we thank our sponsor, Holland Foundation. They are pragmatic, they are very active, they are very supportive. They are working with us in the same direction to promote education in this country. Education is a foundation for a country. The country cannot develop if you don't educate your people. Accompanying President Barrow on this tour was the Minister of Basic and Secondary Education, Claudiana Cole, who emphasized the importance of the foundation stone laying in bringing quality education in the country. Now that we are talking about the foundational learning agenda and we believe that foundational learning is what brings about quality education. Of course we all know what foundation means. If uh, you're going to build a house you start with a foundation and the foundation has to be strong for the house to be able to last long and be, and, uh, be used by a lot of people for many years and uh, in comfort. So we start off with, with ECD here as the building blocks for the lower basic school that could even grow into a senior secondary school in Mankamankunda. Following the foundation stone ceremony, the president convoy proceeded to Bakadaji Upper Basic and Senior Secondary School to inspect on the ongoing construction as well as Nasir Senior Secondary School where new classrooms, TVET centers and science labs are being built to provide students with a conducive environment to learn. Baba F. Tarawale of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat pledged to collaborate closely with the government in pursuit of sustainable development. So we'll continue to work with your government how to develop that, how to improve that. So having these uh, classrooms here, I think that will enhance the uh, 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 propagation uh, of uh, education and also to increase the enrollment. This is the uh, basic uh, needs of uh, Ministry of uh, Basic and Secondary Education, that is access to education, so that everybody, boys and girls, will have enough uh, education to improve their life. The Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat embarked on a construction of a hospital at Basse, which President Barrow laid the foundation stone. Meanwhile, in a joint meeting held in Basse Mansajang in the Upper River region, 
The villagers expressed their deep appreciation to President Barrow and put forth various requests for the government to address their challenges, including health care, roads and, electric and electricity among others. The Minister of Public Service, Honorable Babukar Boy, emphasized the importance of local government councils carrying out their duties diligently as they are appointed to represent the president in their respective areas. <laughs> His Excellency President Arama Baruri assured the public that his government will not tolerate inefficiency or lack of dedication from those entrusted with serving the nation. President Baru emphasized his administration's unwavering commitment to the development of the country, stating that those who are not prepared to fulfill their responsibilities effectively will face consequences. May Andy, you are our guy. Follow the Diamond Milk Academy. Follow the Halaji to Halajanuko. And inside the Diamond Milk Academy. The Halaji Halaji Jolini. The Father of the Amunda was Sudan in Tilo. He said, he Why not join my Yaraman? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Why do you want to do? Why do you want to do? Because being as you be Halaji, there are no milk of the Dalin in Maudan. Oh, yeah. Hande. Oh, Dalin. I go to Toranilo. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Ah, the way I'm going to do it. President Barrow was accompanied by several government officials, including ministers, the governor of Upper River Region, the permanent secretaries, and supporters of the National People's Party. For Star TV News, I am Hadi Jaju. That was Hadi Jaju reporting there. Now, following the successful launch of its family concept on March 1, 2023, the Social Security and Housing Finance Corporation and its subsidiaries gathered for a technical meeting at the Sun Beach Hotel in Bacau on Friday. The main objective of the meeting was to discuss strategies aimed at strengthening and optimizing trade within the Social Security family framework. Awasane reports. The Corporation dedicated to fostering collaboration among its diverse subsidiaries such as Trust Bank, Gambia Public Transport Company, Gam Petroleum Storage Facility Company Limited, Gambia Food and Feed Industries, West Africa Leisure Group and others aim to enhance synergy and promote economic growth. During the meeting, various speakers highlighted the importance of working together with the subsidiaries to achieve common goals. Farmer Fofana, Communication Officer, Social Security Housing and Finance Corporation highlighted the idea of creating such. The idea here is to create a platform where we can mutually demonstrate our strengths and explore opportunities for collaborative success. As you might have seen also in the program guide, the major highlight of the Social Security Family Council meeting this evening will be a presentation by the partners mentioned earlier to showcase their competencies and potential collaborations. This is intended to be an engaging session, allowing for constructive dialogue between the participants here present. Chairman of SSHFC, Salum Malang, emphasized the importance of fostering collaboration with the subsidiaries. I'm assuring all the subsidiaries that you will, el you will enjoy the autonomy that is needed for you to perform. Because the social family, social, social security family concept does not necessarily mean supporting each other to fail. No, the idea is to give you like something like um, a force of some choice, you know, to protect each other. But we have to compete. Because as the owner, all we are, we are interested, very much interested in making the revenues for us. It's called maximizing shareholder value. Of course, we know we are a social protection company. 
you are not only to make money, but society also matters. Two things that stand in social protection is access to health care and then ensuring of secured income. Jillian Senghor, the managing director of Trust Bank, represented the bank and expressed the need for increased collaboration between the subsidiaries to streamline their operations. During its 25 years, Trust Bank has grown from a bank of three branches to 18 branches. Now we have uh, delivery channels also added to our network. So we have ATMs, we have mobile banking, we have online banking. Social security is one of our most significant shareholders. At 36.97%, 36 I believe, they've been with us along the journey over the last 25 years. Uh, in its 25-year history, Trust Bank has paid over $1.8 billion back to its shareholders. And Social Security, being such a large shareholder, has earned not less than $600 million from this investment. Varadi Kassel, the general manager of West Africa Laser Group, called for closer collaboration between the subsidiaries to facilitate their work. More even collaboration between Trust Bank and West African Laser Group Hotel, that is Ocean Bay and Sun Beach, preferred booking for our hotel employees. Basically, we would prefer, if possible, all our hotel employees to be banking with Trust Bank Limited. I believe our financial manager and Trust Bank will then deliberate on these circumstances of how it will happen. We would also possibly collaborate with GTSC and West African Leisure Group, which has already been done, perhaps not on paper. And Sumana Daba from Ecotra Group Limited presented the company's plans for nation building. Ecotra Group Limited ventured into importation of basic uh, food commodities, mm -hmm. in the likes of rice, oil, etc., into the country for easy access and then affordability. And then, by extension, the company intends to specialize in food and feed production to promote Gambian made products. Ecota Group Limited participated in a bidding process proposed by the Gambia government for the rehabilitation, operations, management and transfer part of uh, rice production and animal meal, uh, feed meal factory at Kamaro. Ecota Group Limited emerged as the most responsive bidder, both financially and technically, and therefore been awarded the contract under the great leadership because we don't have to forget the contribution of social security housing and finance corporation the gambia Ports authority and the gambia national petroleum corporation mustafa b Koli, the cooperated planning manager at gtsc focused on the strategic roles and related matters while yero jalo the general manager of gam petroleum highlighted the operation of the pumping machines the role of social security and housing finance corporation is to administer and operate three funds social security industrial injuries compensation and the housing finance fund in the gambia the corporation's mission includes providing adequate social protection for workers, facilitating the delivery of social shelter on a sustainable basis and investing funds for optimum returns. This technical meeting aimed to further these objectives by promoting stronger collaboration and trade within the SSHFC family framework. For Star TV News, I am Awasane. Now moving to health matters, the Ministry of Health in collaboration with the National AIDS Secretariat convened a press conference on Monday morning aimed at providing updates on the upcoming World AIDS Day celebration scheduled for December 1st. The press conference took place at the National AIDS Secretariat office located on Karba Avenue. Ambay attended the briefing and he prepared this report. HIV 
is a virus that specially targets the body's immune system. If left untreated, HIV can progress to AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, which represents the most advanced stage of HIV infection. The virus attacks and destroys CD4 cells, which are responsible for fighting infections in the body. The depletion of CD4 cells weakens the immune system, making it challenging for the body to effectively ward off infections and illness. Speaking at the press briefing, Mrs. Adama Drame, director of National AIDS Secretariat, set light on the preparation being undertaken for the World AIDS Days commemoration, underscoring the community's pivotal role, which aligns with this year's theme, Let's Communities Lead. Each year, World AIDS Day has a specific theme, and this year, it is Let Communities Lead. Their members of the press and colleagues, on World AIDS Day, we recognize communities and their crucial role in shaping the response of HIV and global health. It's a chance to think about the progress we've made, raise awareness about the remaining challenges in ending AIDS by the year 2030, and encourage everyone to join forces to make sure that HIV response is successful. World AIDS Day serve as a call to action, emphasizing the need to empower and support communities in leadership role. These roles should be fundamental in all HIV-related plans and programs, not only during their creation and implementation, but also in the budgeting, processing, and ongoing monitoring and evaluation. The principle of nothing about us without us was highlighted to emphasize the importance of inclusivity and involving the communities affected by HIV and AIDS in decision-making process. Ms. Mam Kumba Ndao, CC, Action Aid Program Director, also highlighted some of the challenges faced in addressing HIV and AIDS. These themes are because there are still huge challenges with communities and with living with HIV. And we know some of those challenges are within the program itself, are within countries, are within the investments that are available, not only for HIV programs, but for health. And for us in the Gambia, key amongst those challenges we know are stigma and discrimination, which is cutting across and affecting all uptake of services, including testing, including treatment, and including prevention services. We also know that we have huge challenges related to unfavorable policies in relation to our legal frameworks that promote the uptake of HIV services, especially among uh, populations that we are working with. The press briefing serves as a reminder that education, awareness, and support are vital in creating a more inclusive and compassionate society. As World AIDS Day approaches on December 1st, the entire nation stood united, ready to commemorate this important day and contribute to the ongoing battle against HIV and AIDS. UNED's country director, Ms. Sirandao, reveals that her institution is calling for urgent support to let communities lead in the fight to end AIDS. This World AIDS Day... UNAIDS is calling for urgent support to let communities lead in the fight to end AIDS. We are shining a light on how community-led intervention are central to enabling the end of AIDS as a public health threat. The world can end AIDS with communities leading the way. Organization of communities living with at risk or affected by HIV are the four front line of progress in the HIV response. Communities connect people with person-centered public health services, build trust, innovate, monitor implementation of policies and service, and hold providers accountable. According to the Gambia HIV Estimate 2018, Adults and children living with HIV stood at 26,000, whereas women aged 15 and over living with HIV 15,000, men aged 15 and over living with HIV 9,300, children aged 0 to 14 living with HIV 1,900, women aged 15 to 49 HIV prevalence rate 2.3, men aged 15 to 49 HIV prevalence rate 1.5 percent, 37 percent know their HIV status, 27 percent are on antiretroviral therapy and retain. Reporting for Star TV News, I am Baikor.
Now away from health matters, in a commendable display of environmental stewardship, the Economics and Management Sciences Students Association of the University of the Gambia on Saturday organized a significant tree planting exercise. The event took place at the University of the Gambia School of Business and Public Administration and it receives valuable support from the Standard Chartered Bank Gambia Limited. As our model budget reports, the primary objective behind this endeavor was to enhance the appealing and economic ecological value of the recently constructed Faraba campus. The University of the Gambia School of Business and Public Administration registered a facelift as Ecomansa and the Standard Chartered Bank planted over 123 different varieties of trees on the school campus. The activity geared towards supporting the global initiative in combating climate change. The president of the University of the Gambia Students' Union, Kemo Conte, said the initiative is in response to the challenges caused by global warming, adding that the planted trees will go a long way in redressing the global menace. However, noticing these trees become a major challenge for many organizations that partake in tree planting exercises. For the University Students Union President, plants are already in place to effectively monitor these newly planted trees. So uh, what we do uh, in our collaboration with our partners, we ensure that we est uh, establish a system, a monitoring system in terms of how these plants uh, are, are flourishing in the respective places that we've planted them. Uh, we planted over 1,500 the trees in Kian Tendaba in our last student week. And today, if you go there, we partner with uh, other NGOs such as Green of Gambia, such as uh, Faculty of Agriculture and Environment, and they are uh, giving that periodic monitoring system to those places. And the, the, the feedback we're getting from them that is that these trees are doing well. If you go to uh, Tambe wetland, uh, that is around Juswang here, the trees that we planted, we also partner with other environment enthusiasts who ensure that they establish that periodic inspection there to ensure that the trees, they get to the position that we all desire. So there is an institutionalized system in place to ensure that proper monitoring is in place so that, you know, the demand of the union and its partners as well as the sub-association can be met. The chief executive officer of the Standard Chartered Bank, Gambia, Chuks Oga, outlined the purpose of their partnership with the university student body. Mr. Chuks noted that supporting this initiative is beyond their social corporate responsibility. The Standard Chartered Boards poised to promote youth empowerment and environment-oriented initiative. Taking several commitments as a financial institution to meet uh, net zero uh, 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 initiatives. And we, the commitments we've taken is that we are not even going to do our normal business of financing unless it meets certain criteria. And those criteria are aligned to sustainability goals, the ESG goals. So anything that is not going to help us achieve net zero, we won't even finance. So it's no longer just corporate uh, social responsibility, it's now a part of doing business. That's what we've done. So we've now embedded it in our business line. So we're not going to fund things like um, uh, coal. That is, that is not going to help sustainability. So those are examples of things that we will not do. So planting uh, trees like this, encouraging the environment to go green, encouraging net zero, that's part of our business strategy going forward. It's not just corporate social, it's not a side show, it's not the main event now. That's the point I want to make. Okay. A development major, Binda Kante, is with the view that the initiative will help mitigate the impact of climate change. In UTG, we've always been doing the planting trees in order to um, fight against climate change. So I think it's a very good initiative and I hope it will be sustainable too. The president of Ecomansa, Abdullah Juara, noted that proper mechanisms will be put in place to protect the newly planted trees. He also took time to express gratitude to the partners for making the exercise a successful one. To thank the Standard Chartered Bank for their collaboration with us and the partnership. Um, they are one of those institutions that are exemplary. The moment we approach them for support in terms of tree planting exercise, they did not say a word. In fact, they were helping us to coordinate every single bit of the action that, or and, and the, 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 uh, the logistic that is required to ensure that this trade plan actually happens. So Standard Chartered Bank, uh, we are commending them, and we are asking other bodies and other institutions to emulate these steps and support us. We are a student body, but we can do a lot if supported. We have a lot of potential. We have highly dedicated men and women that are ready to work, that has a lot of skills in them. All they need is support. 
And of course, we have to thank the UTG management, University of the Gambia student. Uh, the management of the University of the Gambia has been tremendous. They have been, in fact, for the first time, um, this is the first time we're approaching them for such initiative, and they did not hesitate to approve it. The University of the Gambia School of Business and Public Administration moved to this newly built campus barely a month ago, and the planted tree will not only facelift the school, but also promote the well-being of the students while at school. For Star TV, I am Odu El Baji. Now from the story by Odu El Baji, let's take a short commercial break, and when we return, the news continues to join. It's time to break free from data limitations. We've just reduced the cost of our data bundles by up to 60%. Simply dial star 120 hash to get going. Use AfriCell now and enjoy the highest quality, fastest speed, and the most reliable network. Nickel Millionaire at AfriCell. $3.6 million is to give away. Simply buy a minimum of $10 a credit or data worth $10 to stand a chance of being a millionaire. To enter the weekly and monthly draw, send win by SMS to 772 or just call 772 for free. Remember, the more you buy credit or data, the more your chances of being a millionaire. Be that. Make a millionaire at Afrisal, right? Welcome back after the short commercial break. If you're just tuning in, you're watching the study of newsroom and we're broadcasting from our studios in Saraconda. I'm Maria Mariaman. Thanks for joining us. Let's now shift our attention to some international news. Sierra Leone's president says calm has been restored after a group of soldiers attempted to break into the armory of the capital's military barracks. A search is underway for the attackers. The president has imposed a nationwide curfew. Al Jazeera's Nicola Kirk reports. Inside this maximum security prison in Sierra Leone's capital, Freetown, masked gunmen are freeing many inmates. Some of them are wearing military fatigue, others civilian clothes. As the detainees flee, security forces exchange fire with what the government described as renegade soldiers trying to destabilize the country. Resident Victor Edwin says he hasn't seen so much violence since Sierra Leone's civil war. Prisoners are on the run. There are some casualties with soldiers injured. On Sunday morning, Freetown was awoken to the sound of heavy gunfire. Gunmen attempted to break into the armory of the capital's main military barracks, but failed. A nationwide curfew is in place and a search is underway for the culprits. The government is calling on citizens to stay indoors, with President Julius Marabio saying security forces are in control of the situation. Indeed, there were coordinated attacks today against the safety and security of our people, um, against very sensitive uh, security installments across our country. So uh, these are very, very serious, very serious attacks that we take extremely seriously. But what, when it comes to uh, declaring it as an attempted coup of, of whatever sort, we will we'll make that determination. Since Bio's re-election in a widely contested presidential election in June, there has been mounting protest against the government. Rights group accuse security forces of crackdown on dissent with members of the political opposition and civil society actors arrested. The West African regional bloc ECOWAS is condemning what it describes as disturbances in Freetown. In a region that has seen eight coups in three years, some fear this is another attempt to take power by force. Nicholas Hawk, Al Jazeera. Now moving on, the president of the Democratic Republic of the Congo has launched his re-election campaign. The poll will be held next month. Some people say he failed to deliver on promises made during his first term. As it has Harumutasa reports. Farmers in Kwilu province know Felix Chisakedi wants a second term as president of the Democratic Republic of Congo. But opinions here are divided on whether he deserves their vote. Some are disappointed and frustrated by rising poverty, unemployment and the slow pace of development. The head of state has responsibilities towards the people. In other words, he is indebted to us. He didn't really fulfill his promises. 
Chisakedi is hoping his pro-poor social policies to improve education and health care will get him re-elected. And some Congolese feel the same way. I think that the president's first term was merely a preparatory one. Let's give him a chance for a second term so that he can finalize his projects. The general election is on December the 20th. Chisakedi could face stiff competition from opposition candidates who are also promising to alleviate poverty as well as deal with corruption in government and conflict in the eastern DRC. Harumutasa, Al Jazeera. Now, Germany is grappling with a financial crisis after the Supreme Court struck down climate change funding, leaving a multi-billion dollar hold in the budget. The finance minister has declared a state of emergency to allow him to borrow enough money to make up this shortfall. Zero's Dominic Kane reports from Berlin, Germany. What few smiles on show here are for the cameras only. Behind closed doors, the mood in the German cabinet is gloomy. The Supreme Court says using unspent money originally borrowed to fight COVID-19 for policies to combat climate change is unconstitutional. And so suddenly there's a large hole in the public purse. Next week I will present a supplementary budget for this year. We will ensure that the expenditures, especially for the electricity and gas subsidies, are in accordance with the Constitution. That's why the supplementary budget is necessary. I see it as my job to come clean. By which he means Germany has to borrow more money, urgently. The break on borrowing had been a fundamental part of Lindner's plans. Analysts say his Free Democratic Party is fiscally conservative, unlike its Green and Social Democratic coalition partners. This is a very pressing issue and the coalition is talking right now and they are right now searching for a way out. The problem is they all have promised their voters that they would not cut social benefits and they will not raise taxes. So they are, there is it's very difficult to find a way out of this for them. There's also the political aspect to all this. The coalition's popularity is plunging. The main opposition party is celebrating its decision to refer the budget issue to the Supreme Court and is leading in the polls. And there are some in Lindner's party who are openly suggesting a vote on whether they should abandon the current government. As things stand, large spending ministries such as health, education, social security and defence say they won't run out of money in the short term. But what happens next year is unclear. Dominic Kane, Al Jazeera, Berlin. I'm afraid a story from Germany brings us to the end of this news bulletin. But before we take a leave of you, a quick recap of our main headlines. President Barak continues his with the people's tour in URR with series of engagements. Social security and subsidiaries hold technical meetings towards intra-group trade. The Ministry of Health and Partners hosts press conference for World AIDS Day celebration. ECOMASA undertakes tree planting initiative for enhanced environmental conservation on international news. Sierra Leone imposes nationwide curfew after military barracks attacked. In the Congress elections, President criticized for unfulfilled promises. That's all we have for you in this edition of the news. Do join us tomorrow for another bulletin. But in the meantime, do the rest of the programs and have a wonderful night. Thanks for watching.